So I just wanted to, while we're waiting, um, say that today we we released uh, the, the, a policy paper on social protection and child protection. Um, the subtitle is How to Join Forces to Support Children from the Impact of COVID-19 and Beyond. Um, this is an extremely important piece of policy paper that the Alliance has produced in connection with several other agencies, uh, co-sponsored by UNICEF and and save the children. Um, I put the, the link in the chat. Please take a look after the session. Um, this is a provisional release. We wanted to make sure that we get it to you guys before the end of the annual meeting. There's going to be a more formal launch of it um, in, in about 10 days. Um, but as I said, I, I believe it's, a, it's very pertinent to a lot of the discussions we're having, and it's an extremely important piece of um, advocacy for, for our sector. I'll stop sharing. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay, three minutes. People are slowly trickling back from break. Um, do, are the facilitators here? <laughs> One, two, I see two, three, I'm four, here, like four. Four is a good start. I'm sure Judy is somewhere, just not on my screen. I should have pinned you all. That would have been smart. Um, okay, so I think we will get started. Um, a gentle reminder, if you can, if you have the bandwidth, to please turn your videos on um, so that, uh, uh, so that oh, I'm talking to faces and not names. Um, so I hope uh, you all, thank you. <laughs> um, I hope everyone enjoyed the uh, first work session. I was popping in and out like a little bobblehead, um, quietly listening into your conversations. Uh, and they all, um, they seemed really, really engaging. Um, and it was great to see everyone um, really contributing to, to those questions. Uh, we're going to do a small recap of the discussions from each room to start off. So. Uh, and we haven't picked a room order. So facilitators, whoever would like to go first, <laughs> um, it's over to you or I will pick people. Um, I think I'm Mark. happy to go first. Sure. Yeah. Go. Um, <laughs> what I did not manage to do during the break was to get this into the um, PowerPoint template for the Alliance, but we have it on a blank sheet here. Can everyone see? our five priorities here. All right. Yes? Yes. Visible? Thank Feel you. Feel free to discuss the key yeah. challenges and uh, things that were working well. You can summarize whatever you want. So I'll be honest that we did not in our plenary together even get to those and, and even coming up with these five was a, a quick and dirty process that in which we were kind of uh, making linkages between them. But um, when several of the themes continued to emerge. You know, one of the main ones was this notion of reaching out more to other sectors and better including child protection in other sectors work. Um, some of the um, sectors that bear that bore specific mention were, for example, sexual and reproductive health and rights um, and health and education across the, the different groups. So. Um, there is still, I think, a notion that child protection should be better mainstreamed and integrated into these other sectors, despite the um, progress that we've made. Our, our second priority was prevention. This is the prevention of violence against children before it happens, uh, but also um, the way that some of our group participants were describing it was almost preparedness. Uh, but nonetheless, the word that we all agreed on here was uh, prevention and that not only did we need to be doing uh, work to prevent violence against children before it happened, but also making sure that in all activities we do, we are building in and the child protection activities that will make sure that these um, these activities have a preventive benefit. And so I think that I, the notion here in this prevention also linked to the multi-sectoral action and that making sure that we are layering and building in preventive work into all forms of humanitarian activities. 
um, we cheated a little bit and combined two to come up with strengthening advocacy and continuing to engage donors. Uh, there was a sense among the challenges that even though we've certainly gotten much better at describing what we do and its life-saving nature, uh, this is work that needs to continue to uh, happen and especially to continue to engage donors on the importance of child protection as a life-saving uh, sector and set of interventions. Um, number four, uh, research. There was some uh, discussion about really do we need more or new research um, and yes some people strongly felt that we did. Um, others highlighted that we've had a lot not a lot of not just research but technical guidance and capacity building and that really uh, the next phase of activity should be focusing on dissemination, socialization, uptake and use and making sure that practitioners have the space to really engage with what we know already and to, to share that amongst each other. Finally, um, child participation was really highlighted among the key challenges um, and emerged as a priority um, that people tended to agree on. Um, <clears throat> just noting that uh, enhancing children's voice, agency, and leadership has not been a strength of the child protection in humanitarian settings uh, or in humanitarian action field, and that it is something we really should centralize moving forward. Would anyone else from the group like to uh, clarify, add, or uh, correct anything I, I said here? Room three, anyone? No. All right, well, thank you all very much. Thank you for that, Mark, and uh, excellent French. I popped in to catch you. En français burkinabé. Donc je suis très fier. Thank you uh, very much for those um, for that for those thoughts room three and I think as we go forward, uh, some of those themes will be echoed by other rooms. Uh, Laura, I think you wanted to go next with uh, the room for feedback. Yes. Okay. Um, can you see the jam board there. Yes. Great. So I'm going to start quickly by recapping the first two questions, which lead into the third. Um, so these were some of the um, what is working well. And um, you could see quality engagement. Some felt that there was good movements on localization and coordination with other sectors. These also came up as challenges. Um, and then we had some A words going on, adaptability, agility, and um, availability of different resources were some of the things going well. And I think that was in response to COVID-19, but even more broadly um, beyond that. Uh, in terms of some of the challenges, <laughs> another A word came out, accountability to children, to affected populations, um, coordination with other sectors. <laughs> um, training and rollout of the CPMS, limited capacity, financial resources, and then localization also being a challenge and local organizations capacity and struggle for recognition. So up at the top here, the top five that came up um, were sort of similar to what um, Mark has just presented. Um, advocacy to policymakers and donors and um, really having budget and funding focused on children in emergencies and humanitarian settings. Also having a better evidence base to use as an advocacy piece. Um, quality capacity building. So having agile ways to support and build capacity and really strengthen the evidence base of what is working in terms of capacity building. And here's where we tried to get some of our concepts into one <laughs> around multi-sectoral engagement um, and also ensuring accountability to children um, and you can see some of the sectors listed there um, mhpss was came up as one where it needs increased um, intersectoral engagement education health and then considering the longer term impacts related to COVID and other crises um, food security livelihoods and social protection emerging as 
um, as a key issue, um, as you could see with, um, as Hani just presented, the new policy brief with child protection and social protection. Um, prevention is also really critical in our group's mind. And it's there as a separate issue, but it, it also is seen as part of the um, need for um, multi-sectoral engagement, working together to work on prevention. Um, participation, meaningful child participation, and really listening to children's voices and bringing those into steps forward. Speaking my heart language here with child participation, and we put community engagement and really um, adding the word meaningful there and, and helping to define that together. Localization, meaningful inclusion of local actors and co-leaders is another priority that came up. And our group did discuss briefly the climate crisis and children and it just being a cross-cutting issue that is very difficult to ignore. So, but those were the top five there. Anything to add that I have missed group members? A great summary. Anyone else, group four, or room four, sorry. No, you capture all, uh, all the things, yeah. Thank you, Laura. Thanks. Wonderful. And of course, feel free also to, um, to use the chat while we do these uh, presentations. Um, I really like what really resonated for me. And I, again, this is something that came up in multiple rooms was this idea of accountability to children. Um, and I really like that framing personally. Uh, I think the accountability to affected populations uh, puts a distance, right? It's like, oh, them, the affected populations. Um, I think we need to bring that closer and more centered in our work. Um, who is next? Or am I calling you out? Uh, I can Judy. go next. If I can go can. next. Okay. Uh, Amanda, and then Judy, and then Elle. Okay. So room one, and then room five, and then room two. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. Um, So you can see, hopefully you can all see. Leia, can you just confirm that you can see my screen? I can see your screen perfectly. Okay, great. So basically um, in terms of what we're working, what was working well, our group identified a number of areas. First, everybody spoke about the, our ability to come together as a sector and to have common interagency standards. They talked about the CP minimum standards, but beyond that, uh, guidelines, procedures. So there's really a harmonization and the ability of those guidelines to both um, bring together multiple actors, but to be um, adapted and relevant across the different settings. Another, um, another area that was working well was the fact that the Alliance provides this central location for all the practice colleagues and practitioners and policymakers to find the key documents so that was and to find the key resources and to contribute obviously the 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 fact that the cp minimum standards are available and are used in the field it provides a benchmark and this comes to the next point which is really about compared to 10 years we're much more able to measure our work um, and our interventions um, the ability to connect to the long-term development, I mean, humanitarian development nexus, and particularly the opportunity that COVID provided for that. Um, the realization and acceptance of us and to some degree other sectors, but certainly among child protection actors that we can't do child, we can't protect children alone and that we need to work um, with other sectors and we need to collaborate better with other sectors. And then large next is, was our ability to come together to develop timely guidance issues, for instance, uh, in the context of COVID um, and, the, and the links with other and work with other um, actors and in sectors, including on care issues or MHPSS. Um, as you might have heard, I didn't capture, I can't remember, we, we put in the chat all the challenges. So colleagues from my group, if you remember, please add in the chat here the challenges that I have forgotten, but just two that um, come to mind. Inconsistent funding, including across the different for child protection, including um, to local, the issue of how do we give money to local organizations. Um, and then the fact that child protection was not prioritized by other sectors, it's still not seen as a, as a priority. Um, this wasn't mentioned, but I think it is also important to mention that child protection is generally not a priority of the humanitarian coordination um, architecture and management. And we see that um, across the board. And then in terms of our priorities, we identified eight um, and then we voted. So 
Um, the first one that came out on top, as you can see here in the graph, was really um, prioritization of capacity building of local actors was seen as capacity building in general, but also particularly of local actors and frontline workers. And then evidence generation, and here I think the group was talking most more about evidence generation in terms of the efficacy of child protection, demonstrating, making our case in terms of what results we can do and what difference we can make, um, and being able to collate and use that evidence, um, including on the cost effectiveness, for instance, of child protection interventions. Um, again, as many of the other colleagues mentioned, intersectorial work, the importance of working with other sectors. Um, not surprisingly, more effective uh, resource mobilization came up. And then the importance of adapting existing resources and kind of taking a pause on adapting, I mean, developing, when new situations come up, we should rather focus on supporting the use of our available resources rather than developing new new tools and guidance. So that was that was our top five. And you can see the other, the other three there that was also identified. Um, colleagues from my group, please feel free to put in the chat the, the challenges that I had con inconveniently forgotten to take note of. Thank you so much, Amanda. They actually beat you to it. I can see William talking, um, mentioning the challenges to do programming with adolescents uh, yes. and how child protection fits into that. Chia is mentioning um, access to the most vulnerable. So yes, please use the chat box to complement uh, what you're seeing on the screen. Um, and thank you, Amanda and Room One. That was great. Um, I think we are really starting to see a lot of commonality in the discussions, even though you were all in different places, uh, which is not surprising uh, and helpful so that we have some, some directions to head into together. Uh, who do I say next? Judy, room five. You're on mute. Yeah. Okay, got me. Okay, this is great. So uh, we had, we're a very small group. And so we had a very rich discussion um, I think James is going to put up the jam boards, but if not, I'm just going to, yeah, here's a screen sharing. So what are the, the key priorities for the, the sector to focus on? Mainly they wanted to have um, coordination with child protection and different uh, areas of coordinating. And then uh, we talked a lot about um, integrating and also maintaining and listening to children was really important. So, right, so that was came up with the challenge. I'm just going to keep this keep this slide on for now, James, because I want to then talk about what were the challenges that we actually saw. Because I thought they were really good because they were at ground level. So there was they saw the child protection silos were imperfect and that not all children are being brought into child protection and so th that there are silos within child protection. They said there's a lack of fair access to child protection services for, all, excuse me, for all children. And the one group that was really emphasized were adolescents from 15 to 17 years of age and the refugee migrant adolescents, and that once they turn 18, then what happens to them? So what you have on the board in front of you are actually the five priorities that we came up with at the end. And the first one was to listen to children and to give them the tools to protect themselves. And then the second one was strategically engaging with the government on child protection and to ensure that no child is left behind. And that was uh, quite an interesting conversation about that engagement with government. The third one was on climate crisis and how this is relating to pandemics and that the solution needs to move beyond mobile technology. And we really need to ask ourselves, how do we adapt? Uh, the fourth one was around inclusion and localization that this was uh, really critical that we know how to work locally and how to have those skills. And that left us going into the fifth one, which was called reskilling. And we looked at reskilling. How do we reskill child protection actors 
so that they know how to collaborate with other sectors and how do we forge the entry points into our programming. So those are the five key priorities that we were left with. Thank you. Thank you very much, Judy. Um, and room five. And last but certainly not least um, is room two with Elena, the biggest group. Um, we're gonna do that recap and then get uh, start looking to our next, uh, our remaining half of the day. Um, I lie, I'll, may I share my screen? Yes, of course. Thanks, I just was sure, wanted to be sure I could do that. So yes, I had a large group and it was really nice like, to hear the discussion going on in the various rooms. Um, I think you can all see my screen. I tried like to uh, order a little bit of the inputs around some main teams, but um, uh, for those that were participating in uh, my room, please feel free to correct me if I'm reporting something not appropriately. I think in the, uh, what we have done well, one uh, team that emerges around um, uh, a community of practice that it's becoming stronger and that it's producing a number of tools that are really useful um, and uh, varied. So we certainly have at the forefront of everything, of course, the CPMS, but also podcasts and um, guidelines, etc. So there is one team emerging around uh, that. There was one team uh, uh, being discussed around that. And then certainly a cross-sectoral work uh, was flagged in particular um, around working with education as something that has moved uh, um, forward over the last few years. And the uh, uh, shaping of the lands as a more inclusive body where you have more networking amongst members, more pa participation of local NGOs. Um, there has been some successes also around advocacy and child protection becoming a bit more an essential sector to many, if not even if we're not perhaps yet where we would like to be. And then something around uh, the more varied um, uh, pool of issues, child protection issues we are looking at. So child protection becoming uh, more holistically organized, probably around the socio-ecological model. So that's... Um, around uh, um, what has worked well. In terms of challenges, again, here there were like really common teams. Funding, of course, was at the forefront of everything and the need for increased localization. Other team that emerged in this discussion were accessing the most, the most vulnerable with uh, good systems. Um, a valid, very valid point around the workforce strategy and planning identification of talent and capacity building that uh, um, can be conducive to retention of staff, which is often a limitation that we experience in many locations. And then again, um, while we are certainly improved like in uh, working with other sectors, there is more that can be done on avoiding silo working. And, fi and finally, um, a point on making sure that the resources we develop are actually adapted to the context that we work in or are adaptable and uh, uh, are delivered in format that can be uh, received in the field itself. And a point on, and a final, final point, I'm sorry, on MHPSS services often not being delivered holistically. So we came up with, um, I think all the groups had a lot of um, key priorities they wanted to put forward and um, all of them being 
important and no one actually uh, wanted uh, to cut down on anything. But I think the teams that emerged uh, reading through all of them in this last 20 minutes are quite evident. And please, they're not listed in order of importance. It's just uh, as they happen to be. Uh, certainly, number one is uh, cross-sectoral work, putting put ch child protection at the set at the center of cross-sectoral funding and producing scalable models for integrated programming. Then localization and with these localized community-led approaches, approaches and inclusion of governments, of governments and communities uh, on equal footing in programming, which I thought it was a really nice language that uh, the members of uh, my uh, room discussion uh, put forward. Advocacy again for child protection as an essential service for funding, minimum package of services and workforce, but also for broader child rights. And then an increased capacity to deliver multi sector, sorry, to deliver multi sector or multi layered approach to MHPSS with a focus on community led and culturally appropriate programming. And finally, ensuring we are reaching the most vulnerable children and groups, especially as we move towards more remote more modalities. So, this is all from our group, and I'm sure there is more richness, but just wanted to flag for everyone, you know, your inputs will not be lost. Like, you know, we make sure that we bring those forward in the next conceptualization phases. Thank you, Laia. Thank you, Anna, and uh, room two, you were the largest room. Um, I know that was a lot to pack in. Thank you so much. Um, and, and thanks to everyone. I think we had a really rich uh, first work session, uh, just even based on the feedback, you can see there's a lot of shared uh, themes. Um, I had the lovely job over break of taking all of your rich nuanced ideas and simplifying them into one or two words each so that we could put them into a poll. Um, so your thoughts are not lost, but take everything you just uh, saw and discussed. And if you go to the Menti poll, it's in the chat. Um, we've kind of condensed them into the top sort of 10, maybe 11. I think I, I took the privilege of being the facilitating host and put one of my own in there. Um, 11 different answers. We would like you to pick which five of these do you think uh, are the most key, important key priorities to carry forward? Um, I know it's hard. I recognize very well that uh, all of these are quite important and some of them very much equally important. Um, I am seeing in the chat, uh, it says you, can, you should be able to pick five. Uh, if you cannot, <laughs> I yeah, will- There's a problem I think with the, with the poll. Yes. Okay. Can only pick one. So I just I just texted the producers to to correct it. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, everyone. Hold tight for two seconds. All right. I'm gonna keep talking. Um, <laughs> so when you have access to the poll, if you could pick five, um, and then what we're going to do is um, based on your responses, the five uh, key priority areas that uh, that sort of get picked, the top five. Uh, each of those is going to become a theme for the rooms for our next work session. So um, we will we will let you know in the chat which which theme for which room, but each room will have a different theme and it will be the top five answers you pick from this poll. Um, and what we will do in the next work session is we're going to, um, I think it's been fixed. So if you check. I, I, I will double check that it's been fixed. If it hasn't been fixed, please do send me a message again. Uh, Henny says it's corrected. So sorry yeah, about that, is. everyone. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> Um, anyways, I'll let you vote. Come back. Um, and yeah, so your, your top five answers here are going to be our themes for the rooms for the next work session. It's fun watching these little bars move. It's like watching a race. <laughs> a race of all the really important key priorities for child protection and humanitarian <laughs> action. <laughs> this would be a very exciting Olympic event. Uh, <laughs> yes, Nicola, I see your answer. I agree, it's so difficult to choose. I do not envy you all this choice. I am very happy that I get to sit here and watch, um, in particular because we should probably work on all 11 of these topics. Yeah. I mean, I think that the, the beauty of this session, uh, Layal, can be that 
you can, because there are some that are very closely linked as well. So if one doesn't get picked, we can always cheat and bring <laughs> through the nuances. <laughs> Oh, yes, if one doesn't get picked, you can obviously combine some of these. Um, and you're, uh, I mean, many of you in your uh, first work sessions, I mean, again, I obviously condensed them so they would fit into a poll, but you elaborated in much more detail, and that actually is what you will do in the next session. So um, a lot of your more nuanced ideas on evidence, on integration, on in particular participation um, and, uh, and accountability and meaningful uh, inclusion of children, uh, you will carry those forward into our next activity. Uh, so I'm seeing 77 people have answered. Uh, <laughs> Susanna, yes, uh, intentionally, there is not an all of the above. We do need themes for the rooms this afternoon. Um, I'll give you another minute, uh, but then yes, the five that, uh, that win the key priorities of CPHA race, um, we'll assign them to rooms. And what you will do there, uh, and this will be recapped in each room, uh, you're going to discuss why is this area important? Uh, I know that seems self-evident, but you know, we gotta start somewhere. So why is it important? What makes it a priority area? Um, then we're going to spend a lot of time talking about what is it that we need to do together in, in the theme, in the, the area that you pick and that you end up discussing. Um, and this is really an opportunity to brainstorm all sorts of ideas. Uh, they could be small, like specific detailed project ideas. They could be really big, ambitious goals. Um, but you know, what is it that we as a community need to do together in these areas? Uh, and then uh, lastly, we will ask you to give some thought to how your work in this area connects to the CPMS, to the different standards we have, which ones relate to it most. Do we need different new additional uh, work in that area. So that's what the afternoon, sorry, the next session is. Um, and I think 80 of you have answered. I'm going to assume the other bunch are people like me who aren't answering. Um, great. So we have uh, winning, winning the key priority race for child protection is multi-sectoral work um, and integrating with other sectors. Uh, followed by capacity building and all the things that I really, really condensed into those two words. Uh, and close behind that is meaningful engagement and participation of children and communities. Uh, and um, when to know you cannot influence the top five vote, it's done. <laughs> uh, localization as the fourth and um, the centrality of child protection as the fifth. These are the five rooms for uh, our next work session. Um, I can tell you right now, due to a very, very fast moving facilitator, uh, the child participation group is going to room three. <laughs> Mark, you're welcome. Uh, and we will work on uh, momentarily telling you where the rest are. After that, this plenary recap is concluded. You will leave the room and then head into uh, your other rooms, please. Um, hopefully not all 100 of us end up discussing the same topic. Um, I know they're all really interesting and exciting, uh, but um, if you look for the chat, I will type in which topic is going where. Okay, so to recap, room one, capacity building, room two, multi-sectoral integration work, room three, um, the ever popular meaningful participation of children, room four, localization, room five, centrality of child protection. Um, see you all in an hour. Thank you.